Hello, good afternoon, buenas tardes, y bienvenido a Recinto de Miami Dade College uh, North Campus. Um, I want to give you a friendly and warm welcome. My name is Fermin Vasquez. I serve as the campus president here at the North Campus. And, you know, this is a topic that we're going to, this is our second now workshop, right? That we host um, in collaboration with our great partners, Bank of America. Uh, I can't tell you enough good things. Um, they've actually provided me a loan in the past. I'm not putting in a plug, just something before this. Um, I actually have a few credit cards from them, so they're a good partner, a good neighbor, nevertheless. Um, but I think the topic that we're bringing to our community and to our students and even the staff that works here is so relevant, um, especially as we look at media and we look at the news and we hear the Fed is increasing another quarter interest rate. And here when you thought maybe I could live with 6%, next thing you know that, that loan shows up to be a six and a quarter and you're all questioning yourselves, how, you know, how could I afford living in South Florida? Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna bring up to the stage our partners at Bank of America but with a message that there is opportunity. And, and I know that um, the banking industry and our government is looking at what's happening in our community, trying to find incentives, even at a state level. I'm sure you're gonna share some of those programs that are available. Uh, but I, I'm so happy that this conversation continues here at the North Campus for all of you. Um, make sure that information that you have here, that you share it. Share with your family, your loved ones, colleagues, uh, to make sure that they understand everything that's out there and available for each and every one of you. But I wish you a great rest of your day. And if you need anything from the North Campus, like we say here, mi casa es su casa. So thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Come on, we can do better than that. Give, give Fermin and Miami Dade College a round of applause. Yes. We, there's no way that we could do this uh, if it wasn't without the collaboration, participation, and amazing help of the Miami-Dade College staff, all the way from the leadership to everyone that's involved here. We couldn't do this without them. So once again, let's help me honor and give credit where credit is due, Miami-Dade College, North Campus. Yes. When I started this, can, can you hear me okay? Excellent. When I started this, how are you? Oh, oh, some of you need to have some coffee. Un cafecito, por favor, for this side. It's okay, it's okay for you to, uh, I want to hear you because I, we want to interact with you today. I want to hear your questions. I want to hear, you know, what, what are some of your, your, your thinking, your thoughts about the process of home ownership. We're going to provide you with information that I believe is going to make a difference for you, for your future, and, and think about this. It's going to make a difference for your future generations. And you know why I can say that with full confidence? I'm a first-generation immigrant. I came to this country through the amazing uh, thoughtfulness of my, my mother and father, 13 years old. I learned English as a second language when I was that age. Can you tell? My English is sometimes not very good looking, como dice quien Celia Cruz. I learned English as a second language when I was 13 years old. And uh, from my family, as we came into this great country, I was the first one in my family to obtain home ownership. And I, and I don't say that to impress you, I say that to impress upon you because th this, this will be you as well. And as, as I fast forward, I have three sons. By the way, all three of them are married and they're out of the house, it's a great thing. They all, uh, uh, except for the youngest, who's 25, but the, old, the two, the second and the third, the middle one, they own their home. Uh, they have equity in their home, and I believe that it's, it's changing the trajectory of the family uh, by me having the opportunity to become a homeowner. And you, my friends, you're going to do the same thing for you and your family. I believe that. Give yourselves a round of applause because you're here. You made it. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, who am I? My, my name is Joe Velasquez, and um, I am not going to sing and dance, Also, although the ambience looks like I will. I will not bore you with that. My name is Joe Velasquez, I'm with Bank of America, and I represent our Neighborhood and Community Lending Division. And it, within our division, our, our job, and let me say it this way, our passion is to help prospect home buyers obtain home ownership. 
That's what I do in, in, my, in my line of business. That's what I do at Bank of America. And there are many individuals just like myself and many of them in the room here that have the same passion. We want to see you, we want to see communities obtain home ownership. Why is that? Because home ownership is the path to building wealth. It's still the, the very foundational building block to economic mobility in America today. It still is. Now, is it a little bit challenging? Yes, and we'll, we're gonna talk about that. We know that there's some, some roadblocks and maybe some barriers, some things that you are confronted with on the path to home ownership, but that's, that's why we're here. We, we wanna help you create the plan. We wanna help you navigate through that process with, with uh, hopefully what you will see are trusted advisors and help you navigate so that you have a plan on how to get to your destination of home ownership. Before anything else, as I, as I talk about giving credit where credit is due, I wanna introduce um, one of our leaders within Bank of America, particularly here in Miami. Uh, help me welcome uh, my uh, very, very, what I'm calling my, my very good friend, um, but also market executive for Bank of America here in Miami. Please uh, help me welcome and join me here. Vanya Alaguer, please give Vanya, which by the way, if it wasn't for Vanya, we would not be here today. Thank you so much, Joe. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as he indicated, I am the local market executive for Bank of America here in Miami. And my work basically encompasses connecting the resources of Bank of America to the needs of the community. So over the course of the last few years, I think that we will all agree that the issue of housing is one that has really been elevated as a crucial need for our community. So in connection with our very extensive partnership with Miami-Dade College, um, and I do have to mention um, Simon Zank and Lily Segura, they were the one that really stepped forward and said, you know what? We need to bring this resource to the local Miami-Dade community, both to the employees of the college, but also to the students. So that is what brings us what um, second time around, because we were on campus in June, and um, this time around, we're also bringing forth to you the resources around this whole concept of home ownership, first time home buyers, attach, attaching it all of the resources that Bank of America offers, right? Um, to Joe's point, I will thank you all for taking the first step, which is being willing to take the time and to be here this afternoon to kind of learn more about what the journey entails. I will also share that the journey of home ownership, it's not at one point of time. It's not, okay, fine, I wanna buy a house, I'm closing and I own my house, right? It's a journey, meaning that there is a whole process that takes time for you to get to the stage of being home buyer ready. That means you have to make sure your credit is in good order. You have to make sure that you understand what owning a house means, what the mindset means, understand how the environment also impacts that whole journey for you, and also, guess what? Build the resources so that you can afford to do it. Understanding what organizations such as Bank of America or other institution might bring forth to you in terms of resources that you can utilize. So understand that today is just a first step in this journey. We are going to impart you with some knowledge and understanding of what is at stake. And I expect that we will continue this journey to get you to the point where regardless of the economy, the environment, it is still a goal that you can achieve. It might take a little bit longer, but do not let yourself be discouraged by whatever is happening in the environment, okay? So with that, I am going to say welcome again. Thank you for your time. I'm looking to a phenomenal session, and Joe, I will pass it back on to you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Vanya. Couple of uh, housekeeping items. Uh, you, sh you would have received a form that looks like this when you came in. I just want to make sure that you're comfortable with the information that we're requesting. If uh, you haven't filled it out yet, if you would, please make sure that we get it back from you before you leave. It's basically just a way for us to uh, gather some information 
We, we want to be diligent, and we, by the way, we don't, this information does not go anywhere. This is uh, kept within Bank of America. And so if you don't mind, uh, make sure that you complete this form. It's for our records. We actually, re we actually report any time that we do a community activity, especially around education, we report this to our regulators so they can see that, um, you know, we're serving the community in means of education. All right, so let's, uh, let's, let's get started. Who's ready? All right, three are ready. <laughs> Who's ready? Yes. There you go. You know, uh, I, I, I like the energy from you because that just, uh, that, I, if you do that, it's not going to be boring, okay? So, so I'm going to try my best not to make it boring for you. And uh, what you're going to hear today may be some course of a refresher for some of you. Maybe you've heard some of these things. Maybe um, you've been to other classes. Maybe you've heard, you're hearing this for the first time. But I would say this, make sure that you are paying attention, make sure that you are taking notes, because somewhere through you're going to hear something that's going to click, the, the lights are going to go on for you, and you're going to grab onto it. If you have a question, write it down. If you have a question, raise your hand. If, if, if we can see, if I can see your hand, we'll, we'll take your question, and that way we have some interaction with you as well. Is that fair? Everybody good? Well, let's, let's uh, what, what does this process look like? Home ownership. What is what 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 is this? What does this look like? What 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 are the things that I need to think about when I think about home ownership? So I want you I want you to look at the question at the very top, because that is reality. You have to think about this. Are you ready? Is it is it the right time for you? Is it is home ownership right for you? And I like what what Vanya mentioned. This is a journey. I want to make sure that you have the right expectations from you being here today. This is not where you turn the page and tomorrow you're a homeowner or next week. It's a journey. It's a process. For, and by the way, everybody's journey is going to be different. For you, it may be six months. For you, it may be a year. For, me, for you, it may be longer than that. For me, my journey, when I first bought my home, it, it was about a year process. That's how, that's how long it took me to get everything in place, to get everything that I needed to know and able for me to move forward. It is a journey, and everyone's journey is going to be different. That's why this question is critical. It's exciting. It's exciting. It's something that it's emotional. It's emotional for everybody. But you've got to ask, your, ask yourself the question, are you ready? So some of the things that, that you need to consider in the benefits of home ownership, I'm looking at the first bullet there to your left. It's a potential increase in equity as you pay down the mortgage. You heard me say home ownership is the fundamental, is the first step towards building wealth in America. How do you build wealth? Yes, you can have money in your bank account. Yes, you can have money in your investments account as you build up you know, those balances. Equity is another form of building wealth. What is equity? Very quickly, equity is the difference between your loan balance, what you owe the bank, versus what the market value of the property is. That's, the difference is equity. For example, Let's say that I have a loan amount with the bank, just for numbers easy, make numbers easy. Let's say that my loan balance is $75,000. And my home, let's say it's valued at $100,000. So how much equity, what's the difference in those two? Come on, yell it out to me. 25,000, all right? So, 20, so that, that's 25,000 in equity, that's called equity. So that's wealth. Literally, in addition to whatever I would have in the bank account, in whatever other account, that would be counted towards my net worth, meaning that's part of my wealth. It's not money that I have available to me, but it's money that I have in my asset, which is in my home. And that is part of building wealth in America today. Another benefit is, um, I mean, literally, look at number two, satisfaction and stability of having a place to call your own home. There is nothing like it. That's why you're here today, because you're, 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 you're searching exactly for that. Uh, avoiding the risk of the, the variance in rental payments. Once you, once you purchase your home and you obtain a, what, what would be a fixed rate loan, that payment is going to be fixed, meaning it's going to be equal for the next 30 years. So you avoid uh, the variance of rental. And then uh, there are also, there could be some potential tax benefits on the amount of interest that you pay. Typically, whatever the amount of interest that you've paid for each year, 
that's, that becomes a deduction, or, or could be, depending on your, your own profile, it could be a deduction on your taxes. So benefits. Now, let's kind of take a look at both, right? Advantages and, and disadvantages. We talked about the potential tax benefits. Now, on the other hand, you're going to have property taxes. You, you're going to have to pay the local government agencies property taxes. You no, we don't do that from a rental perspective. Why? Who pays the taxes on a rental? Whoever owns the property, the landlord. When you become a homeowner, now you've got to pay taxes. And that's part of, typically, that's going to be part of your mortgage payment. Your mortgage, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But that's, that's uh, that, you know, some of the advantages and disadvantages. Again, we talked about building equity. Um, you also have to pay homeowners insurance. So now part of your payment that you didn't have as a renter, now you've got to have homeowners insurance. Why? You want to have your property protected. If something happens with your property, whatever it may be, you want to make sure that you have coverage from an insurance perspective. Um, I like this pride of ownership. This, this is, and this is, this is a good pride, by the way. This is not an egotistic kind of pride. You all follow me? <laughs> it's good pride. It's, it feels good. Stability. It's known. There are statistics that say, st from a stability perspective, that statistics show that children will do better, do better in school, uh, in households that are uh, home ownership. Uh, mortgage payments could total less than rent over time, and we do see that. There are some some seasons. There are some markets. Where the, where the actual mortgage payment could be less than what someone is paying in rent. It may not always be the case, but, but it, we do see that. On this side over here, uh, some of the disadvantages, um, you know, you, uh, you got an upfront down payment and closing costs. You've got to have enough funds, money, to enter into the loan transaction, which is down payment, which is closing costs. What is closing costs? All of the different types of fees that are associated with the loan uh, structure. Uh, also, some folks may, may look at this as a disadvantage. I don't. Long-term commitment to a location. So you purchase a home, you're there, you know, it's like, okay, are, are we going to, especially today, we kind of hear a lot of that uh, in the different ages of demographics that some may not want to anchor. Some may not want to say, look, this is where, I, you know, I, I don't want to lock down yet. So that could be something that for someone, it may not fit. Uh, maintenance and repairs. Guess what? If the water heater goes out, you're not going to call the landlord anymore. It's, you are the landlord. You're the owner. So now you've got to be able to pay for the repairs of, of the property. So these are some of the things that, uh, that you should consider. Now, how do you prepare to home ownership? By the way, let me, let me, uh, let me go back because I've got a question for you. All right. Long-term commitment to a location. I, I want to I ask you a question. What do you think is the average number of years that a family stays in one home, one location? National average, what do you think would be? Kind of just throw some numbers. I see 10, 15, seven. five years, seven. Who said seven? Come on, give seven a round of applause. Seven, got it. Did you guess or did you know? Yeah. Make sure that we recruit. I can't see who she is, but she'll be a great loan officer. That's good, that's really good. How do you prepare for home ownership? Well, before you buy, consider what you can afford. Not only what you can afford, but what you can afford comfortably. Now, comfortably has a mathemat mathematical equation to it. There's a formula. You know, it's not just comfortably way, you know what, I feel good about that number. That's, I, think, I think I'll go with that. It's not so much that. You've got to have some mathematics behind that that will support your budget that will support whatever your monthly spending plan is, that's what it's got to be. It's got to stand up to that. Things that you have to prepare for, you've got to understand your credit. How does credit affect your mortgage approval or not approval? How does it do that? We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Uh, you also prepare by estimating how much you will need monthly. You heard me talk about property taxes. You're going to have a monthly payment that will be Part of the payment will be paying back the loan to the bank. Another part of the monthly payment will be taxes. Another part of the payment will be homeowner's insurance. Another part of the payment could be maybe an HOA, a homeowner's association monthly fee, depending on where you purchase. All that comes together. The lending specialist puts that together. You guys run the numbers, and they tell you what it is. It's one, one amount. 
you also have to think about uh, maybe in your, in your planning, uh, spending plan, a maintenance, because things will break down. It, it's not when, I mean, it's not, it's not if, it'll happen, things will break down. And uh, you heard me talk about HOA. Also preparing to uh, estimate how much you will need up front. That's huge. Remember when, again, I'm gonna go back to Vanya's coming because that, that was so relevant. It's a journey. And part of the journey is, is exactly what we're talking about, is, hey, how much am I going to need for down payment? How much am I going to need for closing cost? It, you know, do, do, how much money do we, do we want to have aside for maintenance? It's a journey, and it's, it's through this journey that Vanya referenced that you do all of this right here, preparation. And why, why is this important? Why is this important? I'll tell you why. Because you want to be a successful homeowner. You want to be a successful relevant, stable homeowner. The last thing that you could do is to get into a home and then you put you and your family at risk that if something happens, you have no money for anything. It's the last thing you want to do. So it's, it's, it's doing, it's doing the, the homework. It's talking to the right people. It's talking to the right advisors that are going to give you the right assistance and they're going to tell you, you know, the truth about your plan and how it's going to fit in whatever your, your, your plan would be. You need that, and that's part of the journey. Trust the process. Uh, the, yes, you, I was going to say don't get frustrated. You'll get frustrated. If you're a couple, there might be a little bit of what I call intense fellowship. Anybody know what that is? I've been married for 30 years. I know what intense fellowship is. But I said 30 years. That's a good thing, right? So you got to be ready for that. It's part of the journey. It's part of the journey. You, you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. You'll, you'll be, you, some days you're going to be like, woohoo, we, we got this. And then some days you're going to go, I don't know about this. Hakeem, I don't know, man. I don't know if we're going to make it. And then you go, oh, wait, wait, no, yeah, we got this. It's part of the journey. I, I, the reason why I'm spending just a minute on that, because I can't emphasize enough how, how many times we see and we have to deal as, as professional uh, bankers, as professional lending specialists, how much we have to deal with. Uh, just the emotional part of the process, helping the client think through this, right? It's mathematics, but it's also having the consciousness of what, what it's going to look like. All right, let's talk about understanding credit. Let's get a little bit into the, into the credit part. By the way, you see to your left, you see a gentleman standing up here. G give it up for Hakeem Mohammed real quick. <laughs> He's trying to stay in the shadow, but I'm like, pull, I'm like pulling him in a little bit. Coming to the light, Hakeem. Coming to the light. Uh, by the way, my name is Joe, and I am your friend. And this is Hakeem, and he is your friend as well. And so Got Hakeem is a lending specialist with Bank of America here in the Miami market, as well as many of my colleagues that are here in the, in the beautiful auditorium. Uh, but Hakeem is literally a specialist. He, he works and meets with clients every day, day in and day out, helping them go through all of this process, doing the numbers, running the numbers, running the credit. What does it look like? You can maybe qualify. We, we do this, let's do that. That's Hakeem. And again, there are many that you're going to meet before you leave tonight. So Hakeem, let's, uh, let's talk about credit. So, so help me describe what is credit. We got the first couple of bullets there. Take it away. Absolutely. Well, th first of all, I want to say thank you all for joining us today. Before I get into credit, I see a couple of people a little sleepy. So what I want you to go ahead and do is stretch. Stretch your hands up. Go ahead and stretch to the left. Go ahead. There we go. Stretch to the right. All right. Now I want you to go ahead and tap the person on your left and say, I'm going to get this house. There you go. All right. Now I want you to say to the person that on the right, say, I'll be there with you. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and get into credit. So what is credit? Credit is literally short for credibility, where we want to see how responsible you're going to be when it comes to your principal, your interest, your taxes, your overall home mortgage. Now, it breaks it up into a two few parts. We can talk about what good credit history is. We're going to get into that. We're also going to talk about what is important in regards to your credit to buying a home. What's going to boost it up to that 700 credit score that we always look at, that 700 plus credit score? And we're also going to talk a little bit about, I'm actually going to talk about right now, non-traditional credit. Now, let's say, for example, you may not have started the process of building credit yet, but you got a... Utility bill, how many of us got to pay FP&L this month? All right, what about Xfinity, Comcast? 
what about a cell phone bill with a contract? All right, so those are examples of non-traditional credit because you have to pay those each and every month. And we can use that as a leverage to using for credibility to show that you're gonna make those on timely payments. Because if you can pay FP&L, you can pay your homeowner's insurance, right? If you can make your rent payments, you can pay for a mortgage. And we actually use the rent payments as a way to use for non-traditional credit. So even if you're sitting in here and you say, I don't have credit, I have zero credit, I don't have no credit. Well, if you're paying something, you have credit and we can use that for you. Did I cover everything so far just to start That's it off? Good. That's good, that's good, that's cool. good. Uh, non-traditional credit, it's, that, thank you for, for pointing that out. It's, uh, it's, it's a critical part of the process because there are some members, some folks that may not have that credit established. Maybe some individuals may choose to run their household uh, perhaps by cash only, no credit. Um, how many are familiar with the name Dave Ramsey? Don't use credit, don't use credit. Okay, I get that. I understand. I, 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 know, I know Dave. He's my coach. Um, but yeah, non-traditional credit can be your source on how we create, how we build your credit history by doing non-traditional credit. Thank you. Thank you, Hakeem. Glad you're joining me up here. Hakeem, let's, uh, let's talk about what makes up the credit score. You know, all, of, all of us, we have a credit, credit score, right? So I want you to think about what your credit score is right now. Don't say it. Don't, don't tell us. Don't, don't tell your neighbor. Everybody got it? No, let me see. Let me see. You got your credit score? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. If, if you don't know what your credit score, where can you go get your credit score? Yell it out. Credit? Credit card? Bank of America? Yes. Wow. That was the right answer. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Viridian, okay. There's a number of sources, right, where you can go get your credit. Uh, how many of you know how that credit score is calculated? No raise of hands? Oh, we got two, yes. That's, uh, it's like the black box, typically. Generally speaking, it's, it's difficult to know, uh, anyone who figure out what, how, how does the credit score, how do you, what's the formula, okay? So this is a very basic concept, very basic. I said basic because more complicated than this. But this is to give you an idea of what makes up your credit score. Right here. Hakeem, talk about it. All right, let's do it. So let's, we did say that the credit score is like a black box. As a matter of fact, I want to just talk about a reference point. This morning I was in the office. I had a client before I came here. And he wanted me to give him the formula for getting a 700 credit score. I said, sir, it's not a formula. <laughs> It is a habit. It's a collection of your habits that you do. He said, no, 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 it's impossible. It has to be a formula. So here's what I'm, this is the same thing I told him is the same thing I'm gonna tell you all. It is a series of habits that is recorded over time. Your credit score, 35% of it is based on your payment history, the habit. Are you paying those credit cards on time every time? Are you making those monthly payments on your installment loans, your maybe your rooms to go, those type of things that show up on your credit, are you making those monthly payment histories? Because 35% or the majority of your credit score is the history in which you've presented. The remain the 30% is the total debt. So 30, I'm pretty sure you've heard of that 30% um, ratio where you wanna have your credit cards at 30% or less, right? Y'all heard of that, hands up? Well. That's where that comes from, the total debt. And it's not really the particular credit card, per se. It's the total utilization of all of your credit accounts under 30%. So what the credit bureaus, Equifax, TransUnion, Experian, what they want to see is you're making on-time, every-time payments, and you're not using a majority of your credit, I guess your utilization, to pay for regular things. Because of course, anyone who's going through a hardship is gonna use those credit cards. And when you max out the credit cards, you're indicating that you're going through form of hardship. So you wanna make sure we keep those on the low. Make sense? Did I, did I cover it so good. far? A example, let's say that if I, if I have a, a credit card, then the bank gave me, extended me credit of $1,000, right? So if I have credit extended to me, I haven't used it, my credit extended is $1,000. Let's say that I run my credit card all the way up to $990. What is that gonna do to my credit score? That's gonna cause your credit score to drop. Okay, 
So if I have that credit of $1,000 and I only use 300 a month, how is that going to impact me? That's going to increase your credit. Okay. So that's the difference. That's 30%. When you said total debt, you, you account for the whatever total debt you have, and that is going to dictate in 30% in is going to dictate what your credit score would be. Uh, length of credit history, talk about that. Well, length of credit history is how long you've had the account open. We don't want to go ahead and look at the account and say you just opened up a Macy's credit card like two months ago. That's not going to cut it. We need to see at minimum 12 months of history. And that also goes for your non-traditional credit. You just can't run to, what's a good, um, we can't run to Verizon and get your cell phone and say, I got a cell phone, I got non-traditional credit now. No, you need at least, at least to have 12 months. So that's where the length of the credit history comes into play. Those three things are the three driving factors of a high credit score. Yeah, payment history, total debt, and length of credit. The other two, new credit and types of credit used, it's also going to play into what your, in hours, what your credit score will be. All right, let's, uh, let's talk about setting a budget here, Hakeem. So a budget can help you do what? It can help you prepare for the, co for the cost of home ownership. Got to have a spending plan. Do you have a spending plan that you do on a month-to-month -month basis? And if you don't, that's okay. That's okay. That's why we're here. A spending plan. By the way, let me let me give you this website very quickly. Oh, here it is. Look at that. The bottom left of the screen. Better Money Habits. BetterMoneyHabits.com is a site that has a tremendous amount of resources. By the way, some really uh, short videos, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. And you'll see all kinds of information there. You'll see things like, how does a credit card work? You'll see things like, what is a fixed uh, mortgage interest rate? What's an adjustable? How do I, sp how do I create a, a spending plan? How do, how do I pay off debt? Do I use this method or, or that method? Make sure that you write that down, better money habits. And also, I would encourage you and I would invite you, because we're going we're gonna to be here as we wrap this up a little, in a little while, uh, you'll have Bank of America specialists here, lending specialists, that can set up an appointment with you and, and discuss what we call a life plan. A life plan is what, what, is, what is your plan? What is your financial plan? What is it that you're looking in, in the short and long term? And so we can help you with resources and tools and help you set up what your spending plan would be. Uh, also, um, setting up a budget for home ownership, save for the upfront and unexpected expenses. We talked about that in a little bit. And then uh, here is on the left side, it's a best practice example of what our budget would look like or, or what, the way that we would spend our money right here. So take a look at that. 50% of our funds, of our money, uh, would go to basic living expenses, okay? So including housing, food, clothing, all the things that you would need. 50%. I want you to think about as you're reading this, how, how does this compare to where, where, where you are today? And, and listen, there's no... Don't, you don't have to yell it out. Don't raise your hand. This is all just for you, just for you. But I want you to look at that and think about, okay, where am I in this plan right here? 50% total basic living expenses, 20% that you would put in savings and retirement, okay? You may be there already. You may not. It's okay. This would be part of the plan. This would be the, the journey, right? Remember, Vanya was talking about the journey? This is a journey. You may be at 1% savings right now. You may be at 2% savings. You may be at 0% savings. Again, you're here. You're, you're, you're getting started right now if that's where you are, okay? And then 30% is, you know, what is it that you want? But that, this is, this is a, a very basic best practice example of what a spending plan would look like. All right. I talked at the beginning about the monthly mortgage payment. What does that look like? Hakeem, let's go through each one of these All and right. let's talk about the, the monthly P-I-T-I, as we call it. Go ahead. All right. So your monthly mortgage payments, they are comprised of four elements. Very simple. Your principal, that's your balance. Your interest, that is the loan, the cost for the loan. The taxes, that's where you pay the taxes, the taxes for your property. And then the homeowner's insurance. Now, all of that together equals P-I-T-I, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. But this is South Florida. So I got to make a, another addition to that. It got to go from four to five. And that fifth one is, yep, you guessed it, HOA. 
homeowners association dues. That is also not included in the mortgage statement, but it's also included in the monthly payments that you have to pay and it's calculated in your overall budget. So just how Mr. Joe talked about yesterday of coming up with your savings plan, you also want to make sure you're factoring in how much the HOA is going to be for the property that you would like to purchase. Just a little sprinkle of something you want to keep in mind. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's move it along. How do you calculate uh, more or less what the, what the monthly payment would be? Hakeem, talk about this. Well, you can usually calculate it by 28%. So you take your annual income, divide that by 12, that's your monthly income, and you want to make sure that whatever the expenses of the houses are going to be, at least to be 28% of your gross income, monthly income. All right, so, okay, uh, hold on. So you said take my, uh, tell me that again, take my annual income. Mm -hmm. Are we talking gross or net? We're going talking gross. We're talking gross. So mm -hmm. take my m annual income yep. divided by 12, Yep. all right, and then I'm going to take that amount and I multiply it by 28%. And that, it, that would be the estimated monthly payment that would typically fit a, but that would be the recommended percent. This would be a very healthy position to be in. If you can have this within your budget, it's, it's, a, very, it's a very healthy financial position to be in. Again, you, you may or may not be there, but again, this is, remember the journey, right? You're walking, this is your, this is your, your uh, destination. All right, uh, saving for a new home. We're gonna, we're, gonna move, we're gonna move this a little bit quickly and c continue to write notes. By the way, I haven't seen any hands, so no hands, no questions yet so far? No? Do I see any? If I miss any, let me know or, or yell it out. We got some microphones here ready to take your questions. So saving for your new home, uh, you heard me talk about life plan. Okay, it's, it's an easy way for you to conveniently, do we have a question, Russ? Oh, we do. All right, let's, let's pause for a question. What's the question? Yeah, you, you got to hold on to the mic, Russ. <laughs> I hit the switch. So, you, so, you, so your question is you want to apply for a credit card, a new one. And, and so what would be the purpose of the credit card? To build credit? Okay, um, Hakeem, so you got a client comes to you and says, hey, I'm looking to build credit. Uh, should, I get a, should I get a credit card? And if so, how often, how many? Good what question. would your advice? Good question. If you're trying to get a credit card to build credit, what you want to have is at least minimum of three accounts. We call them trade lines. So you can have one credit card, one other thing that you're paying for could be another credit card, and a third thing that you're paying for, which could be a credit card. I recommend getting... Yeah, we'll just, get, just we'll keep it simple as a credit card. You want to try to make those on-timely payments, as we talked about, 35% of your payment history, 35% um, of your credit score is the payment history. So you want to keep that up for at least 12 months. I would aim for three, and you want to make sure you pay those three on time every time. As I tell my clients, you only spend it on the three Gs, gross, groceries, gas, and a good night out once a month. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you must be married. <laughs> uh, good question, by the way. So, so uh, did you notice the answer wasn't directly as to how many credit cards? The, the answer he gave was absolutely correct because what you need to think about is you need to have three trade lines, three, three credit uh, lines, which is what typically lenders are going to look for. So that could be one credit card. Uh, it could be two. Be careful with credit cards, absolutely. If you, uh, by the way, there is a, there's a credit card that's called a secure credit card, which by the way, we, we offer that at Bank of America. A secure credit card is, let's say that you've never, heard, you've never had a credit card before. Um, you, you come into the bank, you, you put in a, a certain dollar amount, say $500, and that's the credit that you would be extended. And it's kind of like a, almost like a, like a, like a practice for, for someone that's never had credit before. You, you put in $500 in the bank, they give you $500 in credit, and you go out and you use that and you build credit that way. The ideal way to use a credit card is to pay it off every month. You will save a tremendous amount of money by not having to pay interest if you pay off that balance on a month-to-month -month basis. You heard me talk about Life Plan earlier. Excuse me. Uh, Life Plan is a platform, it's a program that we offer at Bank of America. It's, it's a resource that you can access through any of our financial centers anywhere across the country. 
Again, specialists are here to help you if you want to set up an appointment. And it's, it's, it's a number of resources that help you navigate through this journey. It helps you set up goals. For example, if you see, look at the first one, uh, know how much you'll, you'll have to save and by when using a short-term saving calculator. All right, so you figured out, you talk to Hakeem and Hakeem says, you're going to need so much money for closing costs for down payment. Now you can go to some of this resource and say, okay, let's set it up so that the system will tell you and it'll help you on the journey of, of preparing for homeownership. Some of the, some of the benefits of life plan, uh, see how a new home will fit in your budget within, uh, with our affordable affordability calculator tool. So again, a great, great resource. Learn to avoid common home buyer mistakes. Again, it's all part of uh, our uh, life plan resource, all right? Let's go to get pre-qualified. Now we're moving ahead a little bit. We're, we're kind of, this is what I would call phase two. Phase two is now you're, you're, now you're meeting with Hakeem. Now you're meeting with, with a lending specialist because you want to get pre-qualified. So Hakeem, very quickly, let's go through this. All right, so pre-qualified. Yeah, it's on, right? So getting pre-qualified is a very, very detailed step where we start off by getting the initial documentations. To get pre-qualified is based on the four main elements. And here's the best part. We, we're in the business of keeping it simple. So these four elements, you will never go outside of these four elements to get your home or getting pre-qualified. That's one element is income. That's what we're going to check. We're going to be checking assets. That's the second element. Credit is the third. And then the fourth one is the home budget itself. Those are the four elements you need in order to get pre-qualified. And we're going to talk a little bit more in detail about what those documents are. Yeah, and, and so what, what happens during the pre-qualification process? It's, it's, a, it's an assessment of everything that Hakeem just talked about. You're going to meet with a lending specialist. You're going to go through your financial profile, how much, what's your earnings, you know, what, what's your purchasing power. And based on that, if, if you're ready at that time, then you would get a pre-qualification or a pre-qualified letter that says, hey, based on the information that you have provided us, this is an estimate of what you could purchase. That's what a pre-qualification uh, would offer you. It, um, it includes you know, a letter. It's a, it's, a, it's a letter that you would get that gives you the opportunity now to, with some confidence, to go out and, and literally begin to look at what the market has available for you to purchase within your pre-qualified amount. Make sense? Questions, come on. I'm looking for questions. Russ, you're on, look, uh, question right here up front, Russ. Yeah, go ahead. I'll, I'll, I can hear it. Yeah, you say, so let's say you go, you meet with a lending officer and, and for whatever reason, uh, so you're not ready and, and you get a denial on a pre-qualification. Is that what you mean? Okay. So, so the, the only, uh, Hakeem, keep me honest here. The, mm -hmm. the one way that would happen is um, there's something uh, possibly within the credit mm -hmm. that, that might, you know, that might, something that might get you to, to say, hey, look, you've got some things. Okay. So, so you, would, you would not get, uh, the, the only uh, tricky question, so the only way that you would get a denial is if you come and you say, I want to buy a five hundred thousand dollar house, and then it's a, and then the pre-qualification is well, okay. You need twenty thousand dollars in cash to do that, and then you show that you have ten thousand on your checking account. Then the system, the loan officer will go, "Hey, we can't do this. For you to buy this property, you've got to have this much money in the bank, and based on the bank statements that you've provided, you only show ten. You need twenty, so that's not going to work, right? Cool. So that's an example of how assets would play into that." And so that's what's important. As you meet with the lending officer and you provide your financial profile, your documents, the lending specialist is going to be able to tell you, based on your financial profile, your earnings, your job history, the assets that you have, this is the amount that you would pre-qualify for. So they will give you, they will, they will tell you what the number is as to you, what you're pre-qualified for and what you could purchase. Cool. Please. The last one after credit is the home budget. So you can put home budget. Mm 
you could use that one. But for home budget, that's more of how much your principal interest taxes and insurance for that property is going to be and if you can afford it. And also your goal of the purchase price that you're aiming for. That goes in that home budget piece. All right. Perfect. Excellent. Great question, by the way. Mike, a little closer. There you mm -hmm. go. All right. So let's talk about what are some of the documents that you need, some of the very common documents. Is there, remember, you're preparing. You're, you're walking the journey, okay? You're, you're getting ready for this. Uh, copy of your most recent year-to-day pay stubs. You got to have those ready. From the last 30 days, so your pay stubs, get that, you know, start getting. I would say have a folder ready where you can begin to, you know, input and have this information readily available. Uh, your W-2 statements from the last two years, if you are employed, W-2s, last two years. And if you're uh, self-employed, a signed personal and business uh, tax returns from the past two years. 